I'm Vanessa. I'm Travis. Well, we are late to the party, and it's another edition of... Better, Better late, late than, than never. never. Better late than never, and we are getting into a resurgence of certain films from our past coming back now with films that are continuations of the stories that were once told before. Terminator. Yeah, that makes sense. Yes, we'll start with Terminator here. Dark Fate Wait, just, just happened. Not just any Terminator. Not just Terminator. T2 Judgment Day. Dark Fate just released, and we figured it did make uh, more sense for us to venture into one of the best action sequels of all time, yes. my opinion. Released July 3rd, 1991. Very good year. Yes. Uh, it, at the time, it was the most expensive movie ever made to that point, about $102 million. Pricey. Yeah. It had was a, a lot of practical effects, too. A lot of blown stuff up. I like it. It made about $517 million right. at the box office. And, of course, directed by... James Cameron. James Cameron. Jim Cameron himself taking on the Terminator franchise and action films to a whole new level. Once again, coming in and saying, look guys, I can create sequels that are sort of almost better than the first movie. Right? I can't wait for Titanic. certain Titan, people's so. opinion. Correct. And that's the thing is I think it's escalation when it comes right. to the original Terminator that was very horror. He was a stalker. He was trying to kill her. Uh, and then the second one, it is an action film. An amazing masterpiece of action cinema. And it's it, two camps available for both or you can love both or you can love one or the other. But you got an amazing one-two punch in the Terminator franchise. And they have yet to be able to replicate that uh, when it comes to any sequels and that was their attempt with Dark Fate which you can watch our reviews available for Dark Fate but Terminator 2 it was amazing it was glorious we are gonna watch the original trailer for T2 right now, now. He's naked without me. <laughs> Mission. Once he was programmed to destroy the future. I don't know what it's like to try to kill one of these things. Now his I don't think I've ever seen this trailer. Is to protect it. Ah! Come with me if you want to live. His loyalty is to a child. Who sent you? You did. 35 years from now. And his enemy. He's a Terminator like you, right? Not like me. Is the deadliest machine ever built. Can it be destroyed? Unknown. This time, there are two. Terminator 2. Look at that. You just don't <laughs> go around killing people. Why? <laughs> Get out. Look again. Stay down. A lot of disjointed cuts. Amazingly put together just in terms of showing you all the action, not really connecting the story, but giving you enough yeah. information to tell you what exactly is going on. I think on. it's good though too because in this trailer it doesn't really tread like exactly what uh, happened before. Like they don't like go into too much detail. They only tell you the details that you need to know because you already know Terminator from the right. first one and you're like, oh, he's back. They're telling him like he's back for a different thing. And then they go in and talk show you a lot of scenes for the T-1000. Right. I, 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 how you're saying it, it's actually noticing the way this trailer's first half of it's built mm -hmm. is that he's there, Terminator. He's there again to kill John Connor. Right. But it, it totally took that turn in the middle. He's like, come with me if you want to live. It definitely does Home kind quality. of give you a reveal, but not so much of a reveal because it's a big part of the story. You know right, right off the bat right. um, that 
going into this movie, that's how it's going to play and out. I He's a good it, guy. You know that the, sometimes there are the, those parts where you don't want to see what happened, like that twist. Right. I'm looking at you, Jenny Smith. I call it Jenny Smith, but Genesis, you know, yeah. in that trailer where they tell you the twist in the, in, 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 the, in, the, in the trailer itself, and you're like, wait, I don't want to know that. I wanted to know that when I was watching the movie. Right. Here, it kind of uh, needs to be told a little bit because uh, it's part of that story that you need to know. It's not really a big twist right. in a way because you are seeing this other Terminator too, so you're like, oh, okay, well, here's this other Terminator. Now we know why he's back. But the thing is, though, is if you watch Terminator and you take somebody who knows nothing about Terminator, wasn't around back then and didn't get all the marketing telling you that Arnold yeah. is the good Terminator this time, if you went into this movie not knowing that Arnold was bad or good, you would assume right off the bat he is bad all the way up until that hallway scene when they blast the poor worker. Yeah. Um, that is when he's there to protect John and it's when he says get down and he starts fighting Robert Patrick. At that point you have no clue which one's bad and which one's good. Right. So I do feel like they did give you that perception right off the bat that he's helping him just partly because the remainder of the movie shows him protecting yeah. John in some way. I will say this though, I saw this movie first right. before I ever saw the first Terminator. Understandable. Yeah. So it was interesting to going into this, seeing him as a good guy, of course. and then seeing the other movie, you're like, whoa, 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 whoa. Like, in my mind when I watched it, I was like, wait, so he was a bad guy first? Exactly. Like, it was very interesting going the other way around. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great way to flip persona too, as an actor, just being able to do one or the other right. with the same character, uh, it definitely gave him a, a dynamic that was un we didn't know it needed until you got it. And you're no. like, oh damn, yeah, th in he's the, awesome as a good Terminator. In the first Terminator, you never knew that Arnold Schwarzenegger could actually act. He right. was just he was the guy who looked like a robot. Yeah, right. By the time the second one came out, he's already had a career that's built up, and it was able to see Ramping how well. Up. Absolutely. Yeah, this is his prime time almost. You yeah. Know, all so many movies. Yeah, the 90s. When I think Terminator, you think of Arnold Schwarzenegger. Of course. Right. When you think of Terminator bad guy, I don't think of Arnold Schwarzenegger. I think sure. of Robert, Robert Patrick. 100%. Yeah. T-1000. couldn't see another actor playing his character, and I love that it has had such a socially like awesome reference in everything you do. You know, come on, uh, Hot Shots Part 2, Wayne's, Wayne's World. Wayne's World, yeah. Have uh, you seen this, boy? Have you seen this? <laughs> Even uh, Last Action Hero. Yeah, he's yeah, had a little walk hero. by the door. And uh, Robert Patrick definitely kind of locked himself into pop culture by playing the T-1000. Mm -hmm. And everybody who tried to come after him in terms of villain in a Terminator movie has just basically played Robert Patrick. Like, Robert Patrick did an yeah. amazing job. Yeah. And Christiana Loken ended up trying to do it. He ended up trying to get it with... Uh, uh, Terminator Jenny Smith. They even tried it to make it like in Terminator. I know this is a spoiler if you haven't seen Terminator Genesis, but they even tried to make, you know, uh, uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger's uh, Terminator have the same type of liquid metal exactly. as the T-1000. So it, Which is kind of what they're back. doing when it comes to Terminator Dark Fate as well. Right. You got that combination, which That's also that was evolution. In, which when, also was in Terminator 3 as well. Christiana Loken's character had the liquid metal as well as the, the robot underneath. Right. right, which they sort of brought into the new one. Of course, and that's what we're saying is it's kind of, you know, just re refreshing the story and bringing mm -hmm. everything back in from what was already kind of done. And that's the one difference too for me between Terminator 2 and what we got with Dark Fate. Terminator 2 was all practical all the time. Now they did have advancements when it came to the CG and the T-1000. Stan oh, Winston yeah. and everything that he built with the Terminator, but at the same time, the explosions, the car chases, uh, the helicopter and the car chase, you know, there are very big practical set pieces that take place in this film that are escalated into over the top when it comes to the newest Terminator, so you do lose that. This is more grounded, it feels more real than the crazy plane crashes and, you know, yeah. insane things that happen in Terminator Dark Fate. It's a step up, but at the same time, old school was where it was at. Right, and James Cameron has always been that director who pushes that technology forward to make the movie get, be feasible, right? right. Uh, before this movie, they didn't have any like big technical advancements in filmmaking since like Tron or The Last Starfighter. And those right. were, what, 82, 84, and then 91? Movie yeah. release date! So huge, 82, 84, yeah. yeah, huge, huge gap. Uh, like you're saying, I love it because he blends it really well with the practicality. Right. It's not like in Terminator 3, uh, the whole chasing with the wrecking ball, you, you could tell it was very staged and 
over the top CGI fires. So, love Terminator 2. I just love everything about it. The, the whole liquid metal, perfect. It kind of goes with the Abyss. Of course, yeah. Whole, yeah. The whole look and Next feel. step of the Abyss and mm -hmm. what they did with that film. And you got Michael Bean also, you know, oh, we're going off on a tangent though when we're getting into Michael the Abyss. Bean. Michael Bean and Terminator. Um, that, that's what I do appreciate here is that we evolved the story from the first Terminator where it was kind of that connection between the Savior and the Savee, uh, Kyle Reese and, of course, Sarah Connor. And then in this one, it is completely evolved into like a kid in his father when it came to uh, John Connor and the Terminator mm -hmm. in this one and Linda Hamilton who is already revolutionist going up against you know trying to stop the future uh, when it comes to being the the outsider observing this connection between the Terminator and John Connor so I do love how they shifted that dynamic here and that's what added so much more to uh, John Connor as a character the Terminator as a character and of course Linda Hamilton Sarah Connor that's why you were able to be more fruitful and have the Sarah Connor Chronicles that's why they tried multiple times to bring the John Connor story forward with multiple sequels and how they were gonna you know basically alter the story to get it to be franchisable and money making for the future. Now when it comes to this one though, they weren't trying to do that. They were trying to do an awesome story. So what the Terminator Dark Fate connection does with this one, I do feel like for a lot of lovers of Terminator 2, it does tarnish it pretty heavily because a lot of this kind of feels like it doesn't matter when you roll into 3 because time changed but at the same time you got to think about it linearly you have to think about it from the beginning to the end that was the experience that we got to experience with t2 and time changed now we're into the next level of everything that has happened before will happen again so say we all with terminator dark fate for that i respect i love t2 but i am on board where where we are going for the future in of the, the future. terminator series absolutely. Sure. absolutely i feel like they did connect it and they connected it in a way that works could it have been done more gracefully in respect to terminator 2 yes. absolutely love terminator 2 it is going to be one of my top 10 of all time for the action side of things when it comes to arnold when it just comes to memorable moments uh it is one that when i first saw it and at an age that i shouldn't have been watching it <laughs> uh i was just entranced by how awesome it was even had the toys too yeah, I mean, the different Arnold toys and T-1000 toy blows apart uh, and that was marketed for kids and it was a rated R movie I totally had the toys before I ever saw the movie right you just <laughs> knew as a kid you just knew and when it came to uh, the echoing in pop culture I remember you know this was everywhere everywhere the marketing Terminator Arnold but I mean you got Planet Hollywood coming out yeah. here where it's, it's your your getting a grasp of where these action stars are getting a grasp on pop culture for these iconic characters. He was already in Terminator. Terminator 2 is where it just skyrocketed yeah. to a whole new level of marketing pop culture. Memorable lines, toys, everything was insane. You didn't see that for Commando. You didn't see that for The Running Man. You didn't see Last that for action, the first Terminator. Right? You did see it for Last Action Hero. That's where it failed. <laughs> but we'll get to Last Action Hero eventually. <laughs> Terminator 2 though, it's a hell of a, a hell film. Of a ride. Hell of a ride. And the score from Brad Fidel as well yeah. is right. I love iconic. the score. Yeah, well, going back to what you're saying, hell of a ride, I mean, it did have such an a iconic impact on cinematic cinema that they created a ride. The attraction. At Universal Which is one Studios. of the most expensive attractions ever made, too. The ride. It was more like a uh, 4D show. Yeah. An experience. Well, a it's Terminator like the, the Transformers. No, because no, he no, didn't move no, around. No, no. So you're, you're I never audience. played it, so I never played it. <laughs> never went I never on went on the ride. So it, it, it was like, honey, I shrunk the audience type of thing. Uh, okay. but a 4D experience. And they actually brought back everybody from Terminator 2 to that uh -huh. 3D thing because they do go through a time portal and go back and have to, or actually go forward into the future yeah. and fight, you know, some of the Cyberdyne system there, and then it bleeds into the audience where they have a fight with T-1000 yeah. uh, on stage, and mm -hmm. it's it's amazing. It's a supplement. It's a fantastic supplement to Terminator 2, Absolutely. which is a nice connection. That actually does fit in with Terminator Dark Fate, um, just because it takes place within the story there somewhere. Sure. Um, but yeah, dig Terminator 2. If you are a fan of Terminator 2, I wish I could say go watch this one and be happy with, you know, what is going to happen in terms of a whole new story, a whole new direction, a whole new way of Terminator. Um, but at the same time... I will time, say, watch this movie, maybe about Dark Fate. Watch Terminator 2. If you haven't seen it, go see it now. 
If you guys like it, you should comment below. Let us know what your favorite, uh, why you love Terminator uh, 2, uh, and if, uh, if you like the first one more, if you like the second one more, let us know about that as well. It's just going to keep getting like more crazy when it comes to all these reboots coming out. And I do like that there being more so continuations than they are just straight up recasting or retreading or yeah. trying to do the story again. Right. Um, so with that, though, we've got another one coming up next week. And that's going to end up di dipping into the world of Stephen King for The Shining. Secret. Nope, not anymore. You guys can anticipate it. <laughs> Subscribe so you don't miss out on that. We are on our way to 50,000 subscribers, so you well, guys can there. help us there. You can also like and do the thing. On our Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, Instagram, Startup. All the social networking gingers, you know they are. Kicking the party, feel the party, keep the party going on our Patreon. Gets us where we need to go. Thank you, Travis. Thank you, James Cameron. Thank you, everybody. And now it's time to say goodbye. Bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>